I've been a huge nerd for Voltron most of my life. A lot of the episodes of that new toy smell that were centered around Voltron used a big majority of my collection. I've loved Voltron since I was a little kid. It was one of my favorite shows on TV and always one of my favorite toys. So when Mattel sent this nice white box with a Voltron logo, I couldn't help but get excited. On the back, it's like any standard mailer, except if you want to look real closely at the bottom, you can see that this box contains two figures, one accessory, one key, and one piece of blazing sword. So quickly, I opened up the box to find there's the red lion, along with some other stuff stuffed to the side. He comes in this nice display box that has the lava pits in the background. Apparently his power comes from lava. Not sure how that works, but you can see how he's in this great pose mid-action. In the back it shows him leaping through the air with shots of Lance sitting inside of him. Now it does say Lance is sold separately, but he's really not anymore. If you're buying the lion, you're buying Lance. And this artwork on the back shows Voltron all together in his glory with a highlight on the red lion. And in case you forgot, he is an epic 23-inch Voltron. I love this artwork of the Red Lion on the front, along with the holographic Voltron logo, and the artwork on the back of the box is very nice. In fact, the window box can be used again. You can just toss the lion in there and put him back on display. Now you can see there's a fair amount of artwork here on the box that's just going to get tossed out in the cardboard. But don't throw it away yet. There is still that weapon that's hanging hidden in the back. Now you can take a look at the lion here and see that even though he does seem to have a more simpler appearance like in the animated style, there's still a lot of detail in this lion. In fact, if we do a close up on his face here and we move the light around a little bit, you can see how the shadows move around, showing some of the depth of the sculpt to him. There is a lot going on here, even though he is a more simpler version of the lion. Now, none of the bolts and gears actually move on his legs, but you can see that they're all sculpted on there, and they look pretty nice. Overall, he does have the look of that Toinami Matchbox version, including the section in the middle that bends. Now, you can see these little nubs on here, and they help to hold the arms and legs in place when you snap them up. So when you do put them into robot mode, you are just going to follow the uh, outline there and just snap them into place. There is a button on the bottom to make them pop back out. It's part of the easy transformation system. You can see here in the back as well, the legs pop up, the foot folds back. You can do it on the other side as well. And there is a quick release button in the back right by the connector where he hooks on to the black lion. Press the button, they pop back into place. The only problem is they don't quite pop into place where they are of any use. While I appreciate the idea of the action feature of having the quick release legs, he either looks like a drunk ballerina or he just looks drunk. There's no way to make him pop out and actually be in any sort of useful position. He's always just going to fall back down. So it's a neat idea, but it just doesn't work. Now the tail also has a quick release function, but this one works a little bit better. You pop open this compartment, fold the tail over, and push it inside. That way it hides away while you're making the robot. But when you pop the back of it open, it'll just pop right out. And there you go. Once you do have them all folded up, then it's time to form Voltron. The connector piece pops out of the back here, and it does just pop into the Black Lion. Of course, the Black Lion's not out yet. There's no way to actually attach it, so you just have to imagine. One thing to note, though, is that the head does swivel. So if you remember the iconic transformation, the lion heads would roar right after he turned into Voltron. Well, you can still do that. Just twist it around and pop it into place, and there you have it. If you remember the knife accessory that was in the back of the box, well, here it is. It's got two tiny little holes that fit the bottom teeth so it can fit right in his mouth. Now, there are arguments online whether the point should be facing forward or backward, so I guess that's up to you. But you really know which way is up and which way is down. The only problem is the upside has the giant Made in China stamped in it. And the back part here, you can see where you would put in the key to open it up to put in Lance. Now we'll get to Lance in a minute, but I just wanted you to see that there's a lot of detail missing because this is based off the animated version and not the Matchbox version. But you can see here with the blade in his mouth next to the Panache Place, Panache Place also had a blade. Of course it also had a blaster that fit on the tail and a blaster that would fit in the leg. This doesn't come with the other two accessories. It does come with the mouth blade, which is more than other Voltrons have come with. 
If we also compare him here alongside with the Toynami version, I'm sorry, I have the Toynami, I don't actually have the old Matchbox ones anymore. If you got a set, let me know. But comparing it here, you can actually see that there's a lot more in common with the design of the Toynami or Matchbox version than with the design of the Panache Place. Most people compare it to the Panache Place because you can put the uh, pilot inside the lion. But overall, it really doesn't match up because it doesn't have the extra accessories. And of course, the Panache Place version uh, doesn't have the joint in the middle. But it does have the pilot cockpit, and that's what most people think about. Now, when you bring in one like the Toynami version, you can see that they actually have a lot more in common. The joint in the middle, the way the legs are laid out, the way the head sculpt even looks. Those two are pretty much like mother and son, or father and son, mother and daughter, however you want to look at it. It does look like the big mama and the little guy. The difference is, of course, there's a little more detail on the Toynami or Matchbox version, but they still have basically the same shapes. So the overall shapes of the design come from that other version of Voltron. So you might be thinking, Panache Place, that's the one that fits because you put the, the pilot in the uh, cockpit just like you can in the new one, but really, the head, the uh, legs, the overall body, they just don't go together like the Toynami or Matchbox does with the new Mattel version. In fact, taking a closer look, you can see that the faces are almost identical between the two. Some small details are different, like the way the white on the whiskers are, but overall they do look almost identical. Compare that to the Panache Place version, the face is drawn out a lot farther, looks a lot different, the uh, eye holes are a lot tinier, it's completely, completely different. Also, once you get it into mode for robot, you can see that the Panache Place one connects uh, entirely differently. The legs fold up entirely differently. It really doesn't look that familiar at all. Now, if we take the Toynami one, though, and we put them side by side, you can see that they do have a whole lot in common. Now, the legs do fold up a little differently, to be fair, but overall, the shape and design of the new Mattel version does look a lot like this Toynami version. The feet fold up a little bit better in this Toynami version, but overall, you can say that Voltron still looks pretty good. And the three of them together, side by side by side, makes it very clear just how much the new Mattel one owes to the Toynami and Matchbox design. And to give credit where credit is due, that's how it looked in the cartoon. Wow, that's a pretty big look and... Oh, wait, we're not done yet, are we? Even after that look at the line, there's still more. There's something else in this box. What else is down in there? Oh, that's right, the pilot, Lance. He's got a figure too. Now Lance comes in a nice window box that shows you the extra head and key. Extra head and key? That's right, we'll get to it in just a minute. Now there is this great piece of artwork on the front of the box, and uh, you can notice the reflection of light on the shoulders makes the little white circles. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, so don't forget about that small detail. Now right in the center on the back we do have this stately portrait of the Lance figure, surrounded by some of the accessories and action features. On the left hand side here you can see what the blazing sword is going to look like when fully assembled. We only get the handle in this box. Over on the other side you can see there's Lance getting into the cockpit of the lion, so you know where he's supposed to go, I guess. And you see that the key is also used as a figure stand, which is actually very nice. It's kind of handy to have a figure stand for your figures. At the bottom it reminds you that he does in fact pilot the red lion. Don't go putting him in the green lion, don't go putting him in the yellow lion, he doesn't belong there. He belongs in the Red Lion. Taking him out of the box, you get a better idea of just how big Voltron's going to be when you look at that sword handle. It is almost the same size as the figure, actually a little bit bigger. And when you take a look at it, you can see that there's actually a lot of detail and sculpting. And look, there's a nub on the back. What's that nub for? Well, that's to help Voltron hold on to the sword. What do I mean? Well, let's go back to the lion for a second. In the top of his mouth, there's a little hole. You can take that nub from the sword and plug it right in so it doesn't move. It's one of the ways to keep it in its hand so it won't fall out and you won't lose it. Comparing the sword to the Panache Place version, you can see that the design is very similar. 
Now the Panache play sword didn't have the little nub, but you can see that the overlapping bands on the handle and the little cross shape are very similar. So it does invoke the look of that style. Now the Panache place not having that little nub meant that it was loose in the lion's hand. So if we take the original lion and we put the sword in its mouth, you'll be able to see that it doesn't actually sit in there. It just kind of jiggles around in there while you're moving. So it is nice that the new one does have that little nub. Now if you compare it with the Toynami version, you can see that the uh, Toynami version did have the little nub, but it had a different style on the handle. Instead of the overlapping bands, it had straight bands, and it didn't have the little cross at the end. So it looks like Mattel has done the functionality of Toynami, but the original look from Panache Place. Now in the original cartoon, they needed the keys in order to unlock the lions. Here you can see this doubles as a figure stand. There's nothing on the back, in fact it's very plain, but it does have that nice little nub to put someone's foot on. Now comparing it to the original Panache Place key, we can see that one, it points the other direction. And two, the Panache Place one had the little clips, so you could wear it on your pocket. You're not going to wear the new one on your pocket, but if you were smart back in the day, you didn't wear the Panache Place on your pocket either. Now here is the Lance figure in all his glory. A lot of people have said that uh, Mattel's just not really known for their three and three quarter figures. I disagree. I love Mattel's Infinite Heroes line, and this is an update of that line. Overall, I enjoy the character a lot. I think it's a very nice figure. We'll get into the specifics in a minute, but first, remember I was talking about the dots on the artwork? Well, those little white dots are on the shoulders of the Lance figure. Believe it or not, a lot of people are getting freaked out about this. See, in the original style sheets for the characters when they came over to the United States, they had a layout of the figures and they had a color guide. That way they would always look the same no matter who was drawing them or painting them or whatever. And here you can see they put little circles on the shoulders. Now in the cartoon, those little white circles were just light being reflected. And if you look at the style guide, there's nothing here pointing out that those circles are supposed to be white. Everything else has a color assigned to it except for those. On the original toy packaging, you can see that while the figure didn't have white circles on his shoulders, the artwork did show the white circles. So again, some people are arguing that that means the white circles are only supposed to be reflecting light. They're not supposed to be painted onto the figure. Whether or not this bothers you, well, that's going to be up to you. Personally, it's not a deal breaker for me. For a lot of people, they think it's a little more than nitpicking. They think it's untrue to the character. I'm going to leave that up to you. Now, growing up as a kid, the Panache Place version of the Tron figures were the three and three quarter inch figures I played with the most. I love Tron, and I love how these maintain the look of the original figures, but add the modern articulation. These are actually great looking figures. Now, when I said that these were the next step in the evolution of the Infinite Heroes line, a lot of people I know got the idea that the original Infinite Heroes figures are what I'm talking about. But later in the line of Infinite Heroes, they got a lot more articulation and a lot better sculpts. The Infinite Heroes line were among some of my favorite three and three quarter inch figures of all time. And they've done a really good job of keeping that high level of articulation in these new figures. Of course, when compared to the original figures from Panache Place, it's really an unfair comparison. The five points of articulation on the original figures doesn't really compare. But the one thing I'm kind of disappointed in is the gun. On his holster here, you can see that there's a tiny little pistol. But unfortunately, the holster and the pistol are sculpted together as one solid piece. You can't take the blaster out and put it in his hand. It's one small thing that I kind of feel is a missed opportunity. But otherwise, I have to say, I'm really happy with the figure. So as a three and three quarter inch action figure fan, I have to say that I'm really blown away by how much I like this Lance. And hey, guess what? We're not even done yet. He's got a second head. Now I have long since lost any helmets for my original figures. But it's nice to see that they made a second head here with the helmet sculpted on, because I can tell you, those original figures looked a little goofy with the helmets on. So yes, if you want to switch a head, you just grab the head that you want to take off of the body and pull. And again, the figure looks great, even with a different head. There's really no comparison between this one with the helmet and the original Panache Place. The eye visor glass looks amazing. And overall, it's just brilliantly sculpted. 
Now it's time to put our figure into the lion. The key doesn't really unlock the lion as much as he pushes down on a little resistance tab that allows the sides to slide open. But once they do, they simply go off to the side and you can drop your figure right into the cockpit. Easy peasy. And then if you want to close it back up, you just flip up the two sides and you let the tab latch. And that holds them safely, snugly, inside the lion. Of course, this is reminiscent of the Panache Place Lions that featured the canopy that would open and let you drop the figure inside. Of course, theirs had a clear shell, which isn't cartoon accurate. So, I guess that's a bonus for the new Lions. And of course, you can try unlocking the Toynami ones, but good luck. Now, the interior of the cockpit does feature stickers that show computer panels, computer screens, and whatnot, computer electronic computer stuff for computers because this is a robotic lion, and the pilot needs computers to make it run. And then of course the cockpit on the Panache Place just had some little colored squares and triangle shaped things. Not very computerific. So more bonus points for the new figures. You know, I really feel like looking at this new Mattel Voltron, it's trying to do the best of both worlds. The interactivity and action features of the original line and the sculpt that's more anime specific of the Matchbox and Toynami lines. And I have to say that I like the figure, even though people are going to freak out about the little white dots on the shoulders, I'm okay with it because the figures are so nice. Overall, I have to say it's a great package. So altogether, the lion, the figure, the accessories, the blazing sword, Really, my only complaint, I'm going to have to wait for the better part of a year before I can form Voltron.